Hello everyone, welcome back to Too Sweet MTG and welcome back to part two of how to build a cube. In the last episode, we went over the different types of cubes that were out there, the different sizes of cube, and also we went over the basics of picking our archetypes. Today, we're gonna go over the archetypes that I've picked for the cube I'm building along with this series of videos. We're also briefly gonna touch on staples of cube and also start on picking our archetype specific gold cards. So at the end of the last episode, where we left off was picking our archetypes. On the right of me, these are the archetypes that I have picked for the cube that I am building along with the series. As a reminder, I'm building a legacy powered budget cube. So I'll quickly go around the pentagram. In Azorius, I'm doing an artifacts go wide strategy. In Demir, I'm doing reanimator. In Rakdos, I'm doing a bit of madness. In Gruul, I'm doing monsters. In Selesnya, I'm doing humans. Now let's go through the middle. In Orzov, I'm doing Control. In Izzet, I'm doing Blitz. In Golgari, I'm doing a Graveyard Matters Spider Spawning style deck. In Boris, I'm doing like an Equipment Aggro. And then in Simic, I'm doing a Miracle Grow Tempo kind of deck. For me, I think this is a nice balance of archetypes that work well together. Also specifically, I have some Aggro decks in Boris Equipment and Izzet Blitz. I have a Tempo deck specifically in Simic Miracle Grow Tempo. I have a Control deck. The Orzov Guild for me is going to be a Control deck. I have mid-range decks in things like Humans and Monsters. Decks that can be aggressive but can also go a little late game. We like that. And also I have some combo decks. Now they're not like straight two card combos, but something like Reanimator and Madness like combines to make some cool synergies, but cheats on mana and does some cool things. That's an interesting combination of cards. So we've covered all our bases and made sure every type of deck is represented in the cube. We love all that. I will quickly give some tips that I reminded myself of while doing this exercise, specifically when it comes to picking your archetypes. Primarily this will be for filling in the gaps in archetypes because most people will go into a, into a cube build being like, I know I want to have at least these couple of decks. I want these archetypes to do these kind of things. So for me, I know I want to do like Golgari Graveyard Matter stuffs with Spider Spawning as a win condition. That meant Black was going to have some self mill and some discard effects to fuel up the graveyard. That gave me a really good jumping off point because, okay, if Black has discard effects, what also works with discard effects? Madness. Madness is really cool with discard effects. What also works with discard effects? Reanimating things. So by noticing that Green Black was going to have these discard effects in it, it made me realize that I could have Reanimator in Blue Black and then Madness in Black Red. Those all helped to synergize together really nicely. Another example is that I wasn't really sure what to do with the Azorius with white blue is actually the last one that I filled in. I already knew that I wanted to do uh, Boris equipment because it's a deck that, that I've been talking about for quite a while and I wanted to give it a go. That meant I knew I was going to have Artifact Matters cards in white. It meant that I could run with that in Azorius and do something cool with an Artifact Go Wide strategy. Again, just having these archetypes overlap a little bit will be really helpful. We'll just make the whole thing be a little bit smoother. Okay, at this stage, we should both be at the same point. We have our 10 archetypes. We know what we want our cube to do. Now we're actually going to start filling in some cards. The first thing to do is we're going to jump over to Cube Cobra. If you don't have an account, sign up, it's free. For what it's worth, I am not affiliated with Cube Cobra. I do use it a lot and I actually pay them money on Patreon. So it's kind of a reverse sponsorship, actually. But it is by far just the best and easiest place to store and maintain your cube online. Down in the description to this video will be a link to this. This is a budget base that I have made. Basically, it's full of staples for everything that most generic cubes will want. In here, we have all the generic pieces that you're most likely to see in most cubes. We have things like our white removal spells. We have our black removal spells. We have our black hand attack. We have our red burn and our red removal. We have our green ramp, our colorless ramp, as well as a selection of lands that are pretty budget. You'll also notice the nice pretty colors that we have on screen. Basically, the different colors are the tags that I have done to differentiate the different sizes of cubes. So everything in the yellow, you want to run in a 360 cube. Everything in orange is for a 540 cube. Everything in red is for a 720 cube. You can delete the ones that aren't applicable to your size of cube, or if you want, you can swap some of them out if some of them work better for your budget. Like say, for example, you were buying everything from scratch and Path to Exile is about a quid, it's about a dollar, maybe that's a bit too pricey. You can go for something like Condemn, Condemn is only like 10, 15 cents, nice and cheap. These are all the building blocks that you will see in most regular cubes. Currently, this one is only for budget cubes. I am planning on doing ones for like all the other types of cubes out there. So like legacy, vintage, pauper, peasant, all that kind of stuff. Those will come in the future. If you're watching this in a couple of months, they'll be in the description. Otherwise, for the time being, it'll just be the budget one in there. The lands is definitely the weakest part of this list, just, just because different cycles are different prices depending on what's being played in, in standard or pioneer or in modern. But basically, I've tried to get the best lands possible for the cheapest and put them into this form. If you want to ignore all of this and do it all yourself, that's completely fine. I will put on screen now and also in the description how many roughly of each you want to run in each different size of cube. You can then take and run with that and then pick the cards that you like in those specific categories to work as the base for your cube. But for those using this one, it's super straightforward. 
all you're going to do is you're going to go to the list in the link below. You're going to go to import export. You're going to click clone cube. And then there you go. You have a copy of this cube. It is now yours to do with whatever you want. The first thing I'm going to do is go over to list and I'm going to quickly delete the ones that don't work for my size of cube. Now, just as a reminder, the cube that we're building is a 400 cube. 400 is between 360 and 540. So I'm mainly going to be sticking with the ones that are tagged in yellow, but I might keep one or two of the orange ones if I think they're necessary. So to remove cards from Cubegebra is super straightforward. If you've not used it before, you click on the card, you click remove, you click on the next card, you click remove. You pick all your cards that you want to come out and you click save changes. Then here we go. Here is my base for a 360 cube. I can now start adding my other cards on top of this. So what we're going to be doing now is filling in the cube with our signpost gold cards. These are the cards that tell your players what archetypes you can draft in your cube. They also reward the players for being in those archetypes by being strong, powerful synergy cards. Specifically cards that only they are going to want. They're more likely to get them because they're in that deck. How many multicolored cards you want will be dependent on the size of your cube. So generally speaking, in a 360 cube, you want between 2 to 3. For 540, you want 4 to 5. And 720, you want between 6 and 7. If your cube is somewhere between those numbers, then you can go between those numbers. So if you had a 450 cube, you want to be somewhere between 3 and 4. With these cards, we're trying to make them archetype specific. We're not trying to run just like generic good cards in these slots. So if you take a card like Terminate, for example, Terminate is a fantastic kill spell. It's awesome, it's cheap, it's efficient. Normally, there is no downside. In Cube, however, because it has to warrant a slot in the cube, the downside is it's taking away from a cool synergistic card just by being in a cube. Because Terminate isn't telling drafters what to do with Rakdos in a cube. It's also not rewarding just the Rakdos player for being there, because good cards like this are just very easily splashable. Also, while Terminate is just a good piece of removal, it's not something that like black or red is struggling to do anyway. Black has a load of kill spells, red has a lot of burn. It can deal with creatures. Do you need another type of this effect in your gold section? You compare Terminate to a card like Judith the Scourge Diva. Judith is a very powerful card, but you have to be in a specific deck for it to really shine. So if your cube has that kind of aristocratic sacrifice style of deck, the person drafting that in that cube is going to really like a Judith more than a Terminate. You're rewarding your drafters for finding their lanes. Because Judith is a card that most people at the table aren't really going to want, but the person in the Aristocrat deck is going to really love seeing it. In terms of actually finding the gold cards you're going to be running, there's two ways of doing this. The first one involves Cube Cobra. Let's jump over now. The first method is if you have an idea of a card or two, basically something for you to jump off from and something you're, you're already working from. So for me in the cube, I'm building along with this series. I know I want like a spider spawning self mill deck. A key card there is spider spawning. So we're going to look that up in Cube Cobra and see what other cubes are running spider spawning. So we're going to go to cards, search cards. We're going to put the card name where it says filter. Obviously, we're looking up spider spawning. We're going to click apply. Up comes our card. We're going to click on this. And if we go down, we will see a bunch of cards from cubes that are playing spider spawning. We can then go through and find other gold cards that do a similar type of thing. We can find ones that match our budget and our power level really easily in here. And we also have different sections we can look at as well. We can look at top cards drafted with. We can look at other cards in a cube if you want to get ideas for different archetypes, or we can just look at raw synergistic cards. We can then take a couple of cards from here to fill in our gold section. So personally, I'm liking the look of Nix Weaver. Nix Weaver is nice and cheap. Let's open that up. And also a card like Skull Prophet. I like the look of that as well. So here we have two cards that will synergize really nicely with my archetypes. So for me, these cards go into what I want Golgari to do. They both help fill up your graveyard while spider spawning is your payoff. So we're going to go back to our list. We're going to click edit. And we're going to add our card. So firstly, let's add Spider Spawning because we know that's a card that we wanted. Spider Spawning goes in. We're going to add Nyx Weaver and we're going to add Skull Prophet. And there we go. There is our Golgari section. We have the three cards that we need for that section now. That's a fantastic way to find cards if you already have a jumping off point. If you don't have a jumping off point, that's perfectly fine. We'll go over that method next. So let's actually do Azurius in my own cube now because this was a section I didn't actually know what I was going to do with it before I started building the cube. From planning, we know we want artifacts to go wide in blue-white. So the way to find some cards for that is we're going to go to Scryfall. Scryfall is another fantastic tool. It basically is the best way of searching for cards out there. We're going to click on Advanced Search and we're going to click white and blue. We're going to pick our two color pairs. In the text line, we're going to write 
something that will help us find some cards. So for me, I'm going to write artifact in here, because I know I want some blue white cards that care about artifacts. But say you're in different colors doing plus plus one counters, you would type plus one plus one counter into the text box here. If you're doing aristocrats, you would type like sacrifice or when a creature dies, something like that. Something related to what you're trying to get the archetype to do. So we're going to take that, we're going to click search. And here we are, we have all these options available to us. They are blue white cards that care about artifacts. That's really cool. So I'm already seeing some cool things that I kind of want to do here. So I like the look of Malkator, Purity Overseer, and I also like the look of Urza, Prince of Krug. The Urza rewards me for playing a lot of artifacts by making all the artifact creatures really, really big. And then Malkator rewards me by playing artifacts by giving me more artifacts. And what's nice, they're both super cheap. So let's add those to the list. We're going to add Urza, Prince of Krug, and we're going to add Malkator, Purity Overseer. What we can then do, now that we have a jumping off point, we can then search for those cards. So let's search for Urza. Let's see what Urza Prince of Crew can, brings up in other people's cubes. What are other people doing with it? Let's go through and find some cool synergistic cards for us to look at. Uh, something like Ether Swarm Sphinx, that could be quite fun. Or something like Dance of the Months, maybe. That could be quite interesting. I quite like this card, actually. Let's give this a go. Awesome. It's nice and cheap. Let's add Dance of the Months to the list. And there we go. There's our Azoria section done. That's super easy, super quick. Now we're going to go through and just do that with all of our colors. Right, so I'll be honest, in about 20 minutes or so, I've just been able to go through and get a solid base for my multicolored cards. It doesn't mean these are set in stone, but it's a very good start and a very good jumping off point for the whole rest of the cube. So currently where we are, we have our staples. We have a bunch of cards that we know are going to go in a bunch of different decks. We have the first part of our mana base, this is here, and we now have our multicolored signpost cards ready to go. So that's probably where we're going to end it for today's video. In the next episode, we're going to be going over packages. Basically, these are cool little combinations of cards between two or six or so that can sit in between your archetypes and make whole new decks possible. They're really good at adding variety to your cube. After that, we'll be filling in all the rest of the gaps in the cube and finishing everything off. Please make sure you like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff so you're notified when those videos come out. But until next time, I will see you all soon. Goodbye.